Hey guys, today we're talking pest management again with no other than Steve Broadband. Steve is Managing Director of Insistex and Steve is one of the most passionate and experienced individuals in pest management that I know. So this is a very special episode and I hope you guys are going to enjoy the next Talking Pest Management with Steve Broadband of Insistex. Enjoy! So, uh, thank you for taking the time. Steve, maybe you want to introduce yourself to the people, to the viewers, and let everybody know why you work in pest management. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Steve Broadbent. I'm the uh, regional director for Insistex, an American-based company. We've got operations right around the world, and I look after Australia and the Pacific region, Southeast Asia and Southern Africa and the Middle East. So you're a manufacturer, distributor, supplier? Yeah, and in fact, that's a key difference compared to other companies. Um, you know, we're a research-based company, but whilst most companies will work through a, uh, a separate distributor in each country, we have a direct-to-market approach, so we're in direct contact with our clients at all times. Yeah. So we sell directly to the pest controller <coughs> um, right around the world. Yeah, that's really impressive. And I also know you have uh, kind of a background with your business in the US, right? There's a, a lot going on there. Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, well, we're a, uh, we're a family owned business uh, based out of Fairfield in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, the founder of our business, David Nimix, um, has now been sadly passed away last year, but uh, superseded by his three sons. But the, the heritage of our company is it's a uh, third generation uh, pest controller. David ran one of the 10 largest companies in the United States before founding Insistex um, on, on the principles of the whole approach that we have to our market, yeah. Cool. So what a lot of people don't know, you're sitting at a very special place. You see a little bit of it in the background. Where are you based at the moment? I have the good fortune of being able to work out of a home office. So I'm, I live on the side of a mountain in uh, Tasmania, uh, the southernmost uh, state of Australia, or actually an island state. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Be because you hate people. <laughs> because you hate people, right? <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't going to make that too public. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one of your hobbies is shooting, but not shooting animals, but shooting photographs of animals around the world of uh, uh, places that are pretty special, right? That's right, yeah. I'm a, I'm a very keen uh, wildlife photographer. We've won a few competitions, illustrated a few calendars mostly. Um, But yeah, that's that's one of my hobbies alongside uh, competitive endurance riding on the horse. Competitive endurance riding. Just let's take a moment and elaborate on that. What, how many kilometers do you ride on a horse during such an event? Well, the standard event is uh, just 80 kilometers. 80, um, that's incredible. The, and then the, the, for the big competitions being the state championships and the national championships, uh, it's 160 <clears throat> kilometers um, with the... Uh, The completion time is you have your riding time has to be within the day. With one horse, right? Or do you switch horses? One horse, one rider, one day. <laughs> Impressive. Anyways, uh, back to pest management. Um, you have given some talks, um, I think, around the globe, in Africa, in Europe, in Australia, um, on all the major shows on Who Gives a Rats, that's the title of your um, speech or, or the, the, yeah, the speech. Yeah, uh, at the FIATMA conference last year yeah. in, uh, in China, at the Australian Pest Managers Association <coughs> conference uh, last year, and also at uh, SAPCA, the South African Pest Managers Association. So what is, your, what is the content of Who Gives a Rats? What is your uh, main thesis? Well, the, the concept has been, particularly in our area where things are very different to, to Europe with the legislation that you have and the restrictions on the use of baits and the changes in the bait formulations, is that uh, throughout this region, it's very much the way it used to be in Europe, say 10, 15 years ago, in that uh, we have no restrictions on the use of redenticide. So the traditional thing has been to just go out and place redenticides and uh, um, the whole focus of rodent control has become very much on redenticides. But what we are seeing in, the, in these markets is people are aware of what's happening in Europe. They know that we have to be proactive here. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing um, increasing awareness for these um, alternative concepts in rodent management, be they 
uh, trapping and certainly getting back to the, uh, the, the, the the hierarchy of road management as in the, uh, the British, I forget the name of the document, but I'm sure you know the document I'm talking about. Um, in Australia at the moment, we're just about to finalise our, our uh, code of practice for rodent control. It'll be the first time we've had a code of practice for rodent control. Mm-hmm. And I'm very pleased that it's taken on board a lot of these changing trends that we're seeing in the market so it can become a real leadership document. So uh, again, we're introducing this concept of the hierarchy of controls, you know, where, where our first steps, you know, from, from our inspection are, are looking at the environment and managing the environment, proofing, um, the removal of uh, harvest, removal yeah. of food, removal of water, mm-hmm. uh, and then moving into to a concept where um, the, the use of rodenticides is, 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 is at the end of our process rather than at the start of our process. And um, the other aspect which has been particularly pleasing is that we, we're creating an awareness for the concept of uh, humane rodent control. Let, let's, um, let's be much more aware about the rodents. And uh, yes, we have to control rodents, but let's do it in a humane manner. Mm. And there's a very strong emphasis in the standard uh, on that, in which we've involved input from you know leading authorities around the world um, in developing that code. So um, it's, it's, it's a code I'm actually very pleased. I've been a, myself with uh, David Lilly from Ecolab and a committee. Uh, we've been very involved in putting together, and um, it's something that I think is is, is very worthwhile and big change uh, in standards. Mm-hmm. So to sum up. Um Rodent control is um, taking a, or rodent control in your region is taking a proactive approach, or, or it's basically looking at what other countries or regions like Europe are, are currently um, looking at. I mean, Europe's definitely in a phase to go more green or more non-toxic. That's true, um, but it's a slow process, and I think you, as um, one of the leaders in the Australian Asian area, want to be proactive on that approach. It's not that government telling us what we yeah. can't do. <clears throat> Must do, and and have the have it the government doesn't see a need to be involved because the industry is is evolving uh, right. itself. Now, so a question I I would have um, for our viewers just to have a more or a better insight of your market. You have ninety percent roof rats, correct? Um, in Australia, we're probably when we talk of rats, probably seventy between depending on the area, but um, between seventy to ninety percent of our rat infestations will be the roof rat, ratus ratus. And it's been treated with rodenticides in probably ninety percent of the cases, and the rest is probably trapping and stuff like that. Yeah, the, 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 the majority of control is focused around rodenticide use, whether that be professional use or um, retail sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but there is a new product that Bayer wants to launch in Europe or particularly in, in Germany for the for a start. That's kind of an, an, uh, an old active uh, that has been used in Australia many years ago and uh, you, uh, where they claim it doesn't have any secondary poisoning risks whatsoever. But you did have some info on that as well, right? Well, I think you're referring to colicalciferol. Um Yeah. And um, colicalciferol is being used in Australia. There are two companies marketing the product. But I, I think the important point is to recognize that colicalciferol is, is, is an alternative to anticoagulants, but it's not necessarily a safe alternative. And, um, you know, people need to look at the use of that every bit as carefully as they do other products, yes. Um, anyways, what I would be interested to learn is what will be your perspective on rodent management or rodent control within the next couple of years? How do you think the business model is going to change or what can people take away? Um, if I have a pest control business with, let's say, 10, 20 technicians, what would be um, the things that I need to deal with or things that I need to be clear on uh, so I um, will still have a successful, profitable and effective business in the next 10 years? I think we just have to, you know, certainly in our region, it's, 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 it, we need to move towards what's happening in Europe. We don't need to avoid the use of redenticides, but we do need to make sure we're using them more cautiously. Mm-hmm. Um, and that we, we basically follow this hierarchical structure. Um, we're going to see increases in electronic use of electronic monitoring systems, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, digital pest control is definitely the future. Mm-hmm. Um, I think 
uh, the use of blue boards, uh, the, the, the Australian Code of Practice makes it very clear that they are an absolute last resort, whereas they've been widely used perhaps in the past in Australia, certainly they're available even in consumer markets in Australia. But mm. I think, yes, we've got to look, look more responsibly in terms of the whole concept of rodent management, both in terms of um, non-target species, but also in terms of the target species that we're not killing them in a cruel or inhumane manner, mm-hmm. um, and are judicious in the use of our baits. Yeah. We've certainly seen examples of um, baits that have been used in uh, piggeries where we've ended up with residues of the uh, active constituents in the pigs in overseas markets. Yeah. This, this is going to be an ongoing awareness thing, and um, by using rodenticides more judiciously, by employing the whole concept of the hierarchy, mm-hmm. um, by, by use of digital technology, we can maybe reduce them or, or certainly make um, the, the safer use of rodenticides so that we um, benefit everybody. Mm-hmm. You said digital pest control is the future. You, um, I, I think, what, what will be your dream solution? I mean, um, anticoagulants or rodenticides are definitely an effective solution, and uh, I think they're going to stay uh, one part of the uh, weaponry that pest controllers do have as an option or the part of the toolbox. So I think that um, the opportunity with digital sensor technology, you know, using biocides more efficiently, can also be an alternative, right? But What would be your uh, view on, um, let's say, a food factory or a piggery in 10 years? If you get them or your clients, your pest management uh, clients, get them as a new client to do or perform pest control at a piggery or a food site, how would that installation look like with digital sensors? How would it change the work? I mean, really, it's going to be just following that hierarchy. We, we've got to start going in. You know, the emphasis of the program is going to really start on that inspection. Mm. Um, we're going to, to see a, a more clearly inspection-based business model. Um, from that inspection is going to flow the recommendations. And and this is where sort of like the hardest challenges for the pest control is going to be is to get the managers of those facilities Uh, on board, particularly from what I see in the piggeries industries, to improve their housekeeping, um, improve their proofing, reducing the food availability, uh, reducing the water availability to the rodents, <clears throat> then moving towards more trapping, more use of uh, cameras so we know what's going on, mm-hmm. and uh, trying to break the cycle from that perspective. Mm-hmm. So you also think there's going to be like a more on-demand service versus a very periodical service that it is right now, let's say 12 visits per year, six visits per year to installing digital sensors and being more like on-demand? Yes. Yeah, I think that's where I'd like to see things going from what I'm seeing and, you know, coming through in the market, what's available in the market now. I'd like to see, uh, particularly in the food management area, that we move away from the reliance of, at the moment, we still tend to see um, permanent baiting, um, whereby there is always a, uh, a toxic bait in a bait station, both inside the building and outside the building. Um, and this is, this is a standard demanded by the, uh, the food manufacturers. I mean, the pest controllers have to comply with the... I, I'd like to see that the pest controller could set the guidelines rather than their clients setting the guidelines, but it still tends to be the food manufacturer says, this is what you have to do. Mm. From then to see things more like the, uh, the NARA products that, you know, when we don't have rodents there today, um, and we know that from our own inspections, from the, from the monitoring systems that we have in place, then we need early warning systems and it's far better to use a non-toxic lure, whether that be a NARA lure or whether it be a natural non-toxic, rather than the current situation of always having a bait there. Yes. And then particularly again when we've got uh, monitoring systems, you know, the, the argument from the food manufacturer largely at the moment is, well, you know, if you're coming once a month or even once a week, If rodents come in where, you know, just after you come, then they're there and they're breeding for a month. Whereas exactly. uh, if we've got toxic baits, they're going to be dying from the start. That's, yeah. Well, if we've got 24-hour monitoring systems, then there's no reason to have that there because we know when a rodent comes into the property and now if we are going to use toxic baits, now is the time to put the toxic baits in rather than having them there all the time. Yes. But again... 
if we've got those systems in place, perhaps we don't need the rodenticide as the first choice. You know, the more astute mm-hmm. placement of traps and monitoring of the traps, mm-hmm. uh, be they, you know, most likely breakback traps. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, a breakback trap that's been tested and uh, shown to meet the uh, highest of humane standards. Yep, exactly. Also, I don't know if you know, by the way, AIB, one of American Institute of Baking, one of the highest standards for food processing in the world, probably has officially, uh, uh, unofficially, it's going to be official within the next couple of weeks, uh, hopefully, uh, approved that NARA is in compliance with AIB as the only uh, monitoring product available because it does not feed rodents. This is one of the uh, key differences where we do have some um, you know, grain uh, uh, non-toxic products as well in the market um, that rodents can still feed on and uh, survive. So this is the positive of a synthetic monitoring product that helps you monitor without feeding. Yes, and, and indeed, not only from that perspective, but uh, you know, when we do use natural baits, we do see, of course, um, insect feeding and slug feeding, yes. Yeah. And mold formation and stuff like that, yeah. Super. Um, one thing I also would like to share with people is, uh, I don't know that you're pretty big in South Africa, and um, um, as I've been to South Africa, I think it's, it's the same for everybody else. It's, you, you expect Africa to be a third world country, but South Africa is so different. Uh, also, South Africa is different in terms of the quality um, of pest management performed in not only the food sites, but also in the supermarkets. Um, maybe you want to share a little bit about that, because I think that a lot of people have a completely wrong image about South Africa. Yeah, well, certainly uh, South Africa itself, the Republic of South Africa, um, there's a very professional industry there. Um, they have a very active and um, very well respected uh, association, uh, SAPCA, the South African Pest Controllers Association. There's a very strong focus in South Africa on training and ongoing certification and accreditation. And the industry is very largely self-regulated, so we have licensing in South Africa. Yeah. Um, but perhaps more than anything is this um, um, this concept of ongoing education. And um, I know in South Africa, we, we're running training courses every month um, <laughs> on various aspects for our clients. And they're, they're, those training courses are very much in demand. So standards are, are very good in South Africa, yeah. They are indeed. I mean, I've uh, um, also had a talking pest management interview with Eileen Slubber from EcoWise in South Africa, whom I think are clients of yours. And um, Eileen, uh, um, she's got friends in Germany and everybody thinks of Germany as the most innovative and clean of whatever country. But when you walk into a supermarket in Germany, we Germans tend to have quite a high tolerance rate of uh, flies in our supermarkets, whereas I, th- I uh, think that it's probably the same in Australia. Uh, you have way more electronic fly killers and way more uh, or way less tolerance of flies flying around in your food processing area or supermarkets. Is that right? That actually surprises me because I always thought that biggest markets for electronic fly killers were, uh, were markets in Europe, um, where most of these uh, units were, you know, originally were developed into the market, and we have so many leading manufacturers based in Europe. Which is true, though, yeah. But, um, yes, yeah, certainly, I mean, and that's obviously another field where there's big changes happening. We've just launched uh, the first uh, high-performance uh, LED lights into the market. Oh, yeah. So, again, hmm. we're, we're seeing the, uh, this concept of concern about the environment. So, of course, yeah. the big benefit with LEDs, we use 50% less power. Yeah. Our lights last for three years, so we have less landfill. We have no mercury, no lead in the use of them. Indeed, we have no glass in the use of the LED lights. And um, with some of the technology we've introduced into them, we get the same performance as the yeah. old fluorescent lamps. Uh, and in fact, improved performance because all the lights directed outwards, whereas with a traditional lamp, half the light goes back onto the glue board. Exactly. Cool. Thank you for your time in the interview. Okay, good catching up again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for watching Talking Past Management with Steve Broadband. Um, probably pretty interesting for you to find out he lives in Tasmania. I always make fun of him not loving, uh, not being in love with people. Of course, he's a, he loves people. Uh, this is daily business, but it's uh, really an interesting place to live at. So I hope this was insightful for you guys. I hope you could take a lot away. 
I think Steve is an incredible individual that you could have, you need to have on your watch list. Add him on all social media channels. I know he's active on Facebook. Get in touch with him. Um, if you want to learn more about what we do, make sure to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon on YouTube so we'll, you will get notified when we post a new video. Also make sure to go to our websites if you want to learn more and uh, get in touch with us via email. Uh, you can also listen to us during your commute or workout on Spotify or podcast app. So thank you very much for your audience again and see you in the next one. Take care.